starting the recording now. Okay, the recording has started. So this week we will cover tutorial five, which is on extended surfaces, otherwise known as fins. Okay. Oh, by the way, I want to address some things with things first before we start. So recently I got a donation from a fellow student. Yeah. But most of you all donate through coffee. Yeah, if you want to donate to me, I prefer you donate me through PayPal. Because the thing that sucks about coffee is that PayPal gets a slice of my pie. Okay. They actually take I think about 14% of what I earn through donations. Yeah. So if you have PayLaw, feel free to use PayLaw. Yeah, don't don't try to use coffee. I only use coffee for overseas students who don't have a Singaporean bank account. Anyways, let's get started with the lesson. Okay, so let's go through the theory of fins first uh, before we hop into the questions. So I'm gonna offer my definition of what, what is a fin. So this is not an official definition, it's just what I want to offer. So a fin is a solid protrusion through which heat is conducted followed by convection into a surrounding fluid fluid at t infinity okay so let's try to go through this definition so a fin is a protrusion through which heat is conducted followed by convection into a surrounding fluid at t infinity so what, what is the meaning of protrusion okay protrusion is just a piece of material that sticks out from a flat surface okay so this is a flat surface and we usually call this the base okay it has a temperature of the it has a temperature that we call the base temperature so we denote it with tb okay the base temperature okay if you imagine this is a flat surface then imagine Jutting out of it is a piece of material, usually a solid material. Yeah. So let's say that TB is higher than the ambient temperature. Okay. And let's say this fluid that surrounds the fin is air. Okay. So if the base temperature is higher than the air temperature, then heat will conduct through the fin. So it will conduct through the fin. And at the same time, at the same time, at every part exposed of the fin, it will get convected out, okay? And we usually use fins to reject heat from a surface at a much faster rate than what a flat surface can give, okay? So it's a solid protrusion, meaning it's a piece of material that sticks out of a flat surface through which heat is conducted. So it conducts through here and then followed by convection. It's, I find it important to understand what a fin is because sometimes it's not explicitly stated what a fin is, especially when you go through the past year, uh, past year papers. What? Tiffany, you have something? Okay, anyways. Uh, yeah. You need to uh, you need to be able to identify a fin. Sometimes it's not stated itself. Whoa, well, what is a fin? But then, yes. So when you see a phenomenon where heat is being conducted and then at the same time being convected into a surrounding fluid, then this is a, a fin problem. So now we'll see uh, some other things. Okay, so we have to go through a bit of this theory in fins. So I think the most important slide in uh, Prof. Leung's review slides is this one. This list of formulas for the convective tip, the adiabatic tip, the prescribed temperature, and the infinite fin. Okay, so what is fin problems about? So, like I said, we have a. Uh, our aim is to study the heat transfer through the fin. Okay, the heat transfer through the fin. So basically, like I said in the first tutorial in the first uh, PTP session, most of what heat transfer wants to find is Q dot. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, Q dot, yes. And in this tutorial, what we'll be analyzing is a fin. Okay. And through the LAMS lecture, Prof Long has developed the, the four formulas that we see in this table. Okay, so let me just go back up here. Yes. So for a normal actual fin, it is known as the convective tip, uh, convective tip scenario. Why is it called convective tip? Because in a normal fin, right? Okay, so here's a flat surface, then the fin, then the flat surface again. So this is the base. The tip is exposed to air, right? And if the tip is exposed to air, then convection can ex can occur along the along the fin and also through the tip. So you see, convection occurs at the tip. That's why it's called convective tip. Okay, just think of it as the normal uh, fit. Okay. Then what about the adiabatic tip? The adiabatic tip is a way for us to consider the scenario when the tip is insulated. So meaning to say heat transfer cannot occur uh, through the tip. So we have a fin like this. Again, the base here. But in this case, heat cannot be rejected through the, the tip of the pin. So it will be insulated through here. Okay, so heat cannot escape through here, but heat will still escape through convection along the fin, okay? Along all exposed parts of the fin, except the tip here is adiabatic, meaning to say no heat transfer. Okay, and then the temperature distribution is modeled using this. Oh yeah, I should uh, clearly line out well, what is this, okay? So theta is just a defined value, okay? You don't need to overthink this. Is given by t of x minus t infinity. Okay, what's t of x? t of x is the temperature at e each location of x on the fin. So how they will assign it is like this. They assign an x coordinate like this, and then along every value, there's some temperature, right? So let's say this is the first t of x. And then over here, another point, this is the second t of x. Okay, and then another point, this is the third t of x, and so on. Okay, so at each location of the fin, there's some temperature and it's given by this function. So since uh, t, the temperature varies of x, that means all theta also varies of x. Okay, so actually theta is a function. Okay? It's not just it's not just theta, it should be theta of x, okay, to show that it's a function of x. Okay, you don't need to overthink the physical meaning of it. Just know that theta is a definition where you take the fin temperature at a certain location minus away the ambient temperature. Okay, just take the fin temperature at a certain location minus away the ambient temperature. Okay, so that means that means theta indirectly gives you the temperature. Okay, what we're concerned with is the temperature. Okay, theta indirectly gives you the temperature distribution. Okay, so that means theta of x will indirectly give you t of x, which is the more important value, right? Because we usually use this for like finding, uh, you know, for example, k dt dx, and this t is here. Okay. Okay. So yes. Okay. In the lens lecture, they've already divided it out for you, and it's it, it's not it's not actually that easy. Yeah, they divided it out for you. So for a convective tip scenario, a normal fin, when you look at it, the temperature distribution is given by this formula. Okay. So if you want to find the temperature at each location, you can use equation three here. Okay. And then. How do you calculate the heat transfer rate through the pin? It's given by this formula. Okay, likewise, for an adiabatic tip scenario, when the, the tip is insulated, so heat cannot go through there. To find the temperature distribution, you use this formula. Okay. And then if you want to find the, the heat transfer rate through the, the adiabatic tip pin, you use this formula. Okay. Then a prescribed temperature uh pin means this. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Theta of L. So L refers to the length of the fin. Okay, the length of the fin. So let me draw a new fin like this. So this is our x coordinate, right? So x. This n position is when x equals to L. Okay, basically the length of the fin. At the tip of the fin, we have some temperature theta of L. Okay, which corresponds, which di indirectly corresponds to T L minus T infinity. Okay, so that means at the tip of the fin, we assign it some temperature. 
a fixed temperature okay, yeah. okay when you assign this fixed temperature you do the mathematics of it you know all the heat heat transfer analysis and then you would generate out this formula so to find the temperature distribution in the prescribed temperature pin you use this formula to find the heat transfer rate you use this formula okay and then likewise for infinite infinite pin okay so infinite pin is an interesting case so all these fins that I've drawn so far, the first three fins are all finite length, finite length. Meaning to say, you see, this L is just a number. It could be 10 meters, it could be 10 centimeters, it could be 10 kilometers, whatever, right? But it's a finite value. What is an infinite fin? Literally from the name, an infinite fin is a fin which is infinity meters long, okay? It really stretches to infinity. So think of a fin that never ends it just keeps going on and on and on okay so it's a fin that literally never ends okay of course do you see this in real life scenario no okay so it's important to know that an infinite fin is a theoretical object okay so that means it doesn't exist in real life it only can exist in paper but does that make it useless no why let me explain okay it's, in, it's still important to consider what an infinite fin is because it's very useful for approximation. Okay, so let me explain. So for those of you in the chat, I'd like you to participate with me. Look at these four formulas given to you. This one, number one, number two, number three, and number four. Okay, the convective, the adiabatic, the prescribed, and the infinite temperature. I want, I want you to tell me which of these look the most complicated. Okay, so tell me in the chat. Yes, yes. Convective tip. Okay, good, good. So I agree with you. Yes, looks the most complicated, right? It's convective tip. So let me just put a remark here. Complicated. Uh, uh, sorry. Complicated. Okay, now, again, I'm going to invite you to tell me which one looks the simplest. Okay, which of the four formulas, the convective, the prescribed, the blah blah, and the infinite, which of them looks the simplest to you? Infinite fin. Good. See, so you understand my point now. You understand that the infinite fin formula is the easiest to use. It literally looks the simplest, the shortest, and the most elegant to use. Whereas the convective tip, well, although it's accurate, it actually shows the accurate fin, like the actual fin with no, you know, no insulated end. And that's how fins actually are. Fins actually do convect through the tip and then convect along the, along the fin. But the thing is, when you do the maths out and then you derive the, the temperature distribution and then the heat transfer rate, it's too complicated. Just take a look at this. Would you want to use this? I wouldn't. Okay, so I'm going to make a claim here that these formulas are rarely used. Okay, I'm not saying never, okay? I never said never. Okay, it's rarely used because for the sheer fact that it's too complicated. Okay, long story short. So what is our goal in uh, extended surfaces in this topic? Our goal is to try to avoid using the convective tip formula. Okay, maybe there's a there's, maybe there's a scenario where we have no choice but to use convective tip. But as much as possible, we try to avoid it. So what we do is we try to approximate. Okay, approximate means we try to make it like the other type of fins. So we use these three to try approximating uh, the convective tip, which is the actual thing. Okay, the real life the real life fin is a convective tip, but it's too complicated. So we try to use the other alternatives. Okay, and then. Yeah, so our three choices are the adiabatic, the prescribed temperature, and the infinite fin. Okay, and normally how I will do is I will try to go for, like like uh, Hamza has told me, the infinite fin is the easiest, right? So number one, I will try to approximate it as an infinite fin. Okay, infinite fin. Okay, and if that doesn't work out, okay, and there are some scenarios where it doesn't work out. Then next, I will go to try the uh, adiabatic tip. Adiabatic tip. Okay. 
And I've rarely seen this ever used also, okay? So I'm gonna make a claim here, but don't take my word for it, okay? Take it with a pinch of salt. The prescribed temperature is also rarely used, okay? I've never seen it used in my entire 3003 uh, journey before, okay? So I'm gonna put this at the very last year, prescribed temperature, okay? But I've hardly seen it used, okay? Mostly, I will go for infinite pin, and if that doesn't work out, then I'll go for adiabatic, but this, I've rarely seen it used before, okay? Because it's, I don't think it's appropriate to use it because prescribed temperature, uh, prescribed temperature scenario, right? Only works when there is a prescribed temperature. That means you fix the end temperature at a certain value. And the question must tell you that, right? It's a condition that the question must tell you, okay? So I rarely use the prescribed temperature tip, okay? With that being said, let's continue with some of the formula. Okay, so here's another important slide in the in the review slides. Approximating the heat transfer rate for a straight rectangular pin. So a straight rectangular pin looks like this. Okay, it's not cylindrical. It doesn't have a circular cross section. It's like this. It's a cuboid. So it's jutting out from a base. Okay, so this is a base. Okay, use the adiabatic tip solution with the corrected length. Uh, corrected fin length, blah, 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 where the thickness is this. Okay, so the thickness is how thick this is with the heat transfer rate given by this, okay? So we have the formula for the Q and this, this Greek letter is called ether. Okay, it denotes efficiency. Okay, the fin efficiency, which is a different concept from efficiency that you learn in thermodynamics, okay? Now this fin efficiency is a different thing. So what is this trying to say? This is trying to say, right, okay, if you're given a rectangular fin like this, you want to try avoiding, wait, approximate it with a convective tip. Yeah. Okay, okay. You want to try avoiding, remember this is a normal fin, right? You want to try avoiding the convective tip formula, okay? You want to try avoiding using the convective tip formula. So what you do is you try to pretend that this is a adiabatic tip fin, okay? When you satisfy this condition, when you calculate this out, you know, you put H, T over K, you calculate it. If it is less than 0 0.0625, then these formulas are applicable, okay? What, what is this trying to do, okay? These formulas are trying to pretend that the convective tip, that the rectangular fin is, an, is actually an adiabatic tip, okay? So actually, it's like this, right? The normal scenario. But what they do in, this, uh, in these formulas is, okay? So again, they have this same thing, it's the same thing, but the problem is now, now what they do is they extend it out a bit and then they insulate the end so that we can use the adiabatic tip formula, which is easier, right? Let's go back to the adiabatic tip formula. 